Hello everybody, this is Bob Dickerson from the First Baptist Church of Marion, Illinois, and welcome to our Explore the Bible Sunday School series, March 5th, 2023. Uh, we're starting a new quarter, so this is the session one lesson. It's entitled, Why Wasn't This Sold? And it's found in John, the 12th chapter, verses one through 11. We spent the previous uh, three months uh, studying out of John uh, uh, one through, through 11, and now we're starting in on 12. Uh, and continuing our uh, next three months out of the Gospel of John as well. I use the quick source discussion guide and the uh, leader's guide and the student guide from Explore the Bible uh, uh, lessons uh, produced by Lifeway Christian Resources. You know, although I've not felt worthy, I have greatly appreciated being honored many times by different people in my life. Uh, we recently uh, received uh, a gift from one of our uh, TV watchers who hand crocheted uh, some uh, things to wrap around, a, a, called a throw, uh, herself for myself, my, my mother who lives with us, and uh, for, uh, for, uh, for Robin, my wife. And what a, what a blessing that was for her to do that. And uh, I think of her every time that Robin and I are sitting around uh, watching TV on a cool evening with that wrapped around us and uh, it was a precious gift, and I know that she spent hours on those, and I'm warned by her special sacrifice of time and pretty awed by her skills to be able to do that. Well, today's lesson, and the reason I told you that story, is on how one person chose to honor Jesus. Now, Jesus for sure was worthy <laughs> of any honor that he got, but I want to talk to you today about how he responded to what she did and how, she, how he responded to those who questioned her for what she did. Our lesson summary is simply Jesus is worthy of our worship as the promised Messiah, the Son of God. Our first uh, point is Jesus honored. John 12, 1 through 3, six days before Passover, Jesus came to Bethany where Lazarus was, the one Jesus had raised from the dead. So they gave a dinner for him there. Martha was serving them, and Lazarus was one of those reclining at the table with him. Then Mary took a pound of perfume, pure and expensive nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped his feet with her hair. So the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. So the dinner that uh, took place in Bethany was to honor their friend Jesus, who raised Lazarus from the dead. The sisters, Mary and Martha and their brother Lazarus, all had a part in the story. All of their appreciation was important to Jesus. So let me say that again. The fact that Jesus was appreciated for what he did really moved him. Um, Lazarus was reclining at the, at the table there with Jesus. Likely he paid for all of that. Probably was his house. We don't know for sure. Martha was serving them the food and drink. She was acting as the head hostess, which she's very good at. Uh, she was a very in-control type of person and, and uh, loved to serve others through organizing things. And then there was Mary. Mary took a pound of perfume, uh, anointed Jesus' feet with it, and then wiped his feet with her hair. Now, perfume, the word perfume in the Christian Standard Bible uh, is a Greek word that you probably are very familiar with. It's the Greek word myrrh. You remember when uh, the wise men brought their gifts, uh, gold, frankincense, and myrrh? Well, that was the perfume. And what that was used for, myrrh was a very expensive ointment that was used to prepare a body for burial. It was also a very, 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 very expensive gift. After that, the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. Now, I want you to remember that. I'll talk more about that later. But just imagine her anointing his feet with this, this, this very wonderfully smelling perfume and how it just drifted into and, and changed the atmosphere of the house for the better. Let me give you some background on how that sacrifice that Mary made uh, was, uh, was important in Jewish culture. John noted how expensive it was. 
Judas asked why such expensive perfume uh, could be used on such a menial act of washing one's feet. Why not just use soap, soap and water? It would have accomplished the same thing. Well, Mary also wiped the perfume with her hair. Now, respectable Jewish women of the first century kept their hair uh, concealed. In fact, Jewish law allowed a man to divorce his wife uh, if she went into public with her hair uncovered or down. Just to give you an idea of how expensive it was, laborers were paid a denarius a day in the first century. And since Mary's perfume was worth around 300 denarii, it was the equivalent of one year's salary. So it was very, very expensive. Probably, I, I'm speculating on this, but probably would, had been purchased to prepare for the death of um, you know, Mary and Martha and, and possibly uh, uh, Lazarus, although they might have used him the first time he was buried before Jesus raised him. So the application here is believers should humbly honor Christ as Lord. Now, Mary may have seemed reckless in her disregard for the cultural expectations and concerns, but in humility and devotion, she focused solely on honoring and worshiping Jesus. There are those in our culture who do not understand our commitment to worship and, uh, and, and, and our uh, tendency to dedicate our lives to serving and honoring Him. They may ask questions like, why would you go to church every Sunday? Or why do you give tithes and offerings to the Lord? What do you sh why do you share your faith with others? The world may not understand our devotion to Jesus, but we should never let their doubts stand in the way of our sincere offerings of worship. And you need to understand that when Jesus is honored, he appreciates it. And we're going to see that in, when he was questioned by Judas. John 12, verses 4 through 8. Then one of the, his disciples, Judas Iscariot, who was about to betray him, said, Why wasn't this perfume sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? He didn't say this because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He was in charge of the money bag and would steal part of what was put in it. Jesus replied, Leave her alone. She did this in preparation for my burial. You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. So, interesting, Judas questioned Jesus. And then John gave us some insights that we might not have had otherwise under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. He shared with us from his perspective when writing this that Judas was about to betray Jesus a few days from this event. Of course, he wrote this uh, long after the event had occurred. But uh, so he, he kind of added that in, into the story of what happened. In fact... These were the first recorded words said by Judas in Scripture. He shared, again, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, that Judas didn't really care about the poor because he was a thief. He gave us information that Judas, Ju Judas was in charge of the money bag and that he stole from it. So Judas's words vividly contrasted his greed, selfishness, and deceit with Mary's generosity, uh, selflessness, and devotion. So John, the Holy Spirit, inspired him to write it like this to show the differences of those who, who were there that day. We had Judas, who was greedy, and we had Mary, who was worshiping and devoted. Jesus strongly rebuked Judas, and I want you to get this. Jesus did not want them discouraging Mary because she was right in what she was doing. Jesus saw the using of burial perfume fitting for what was about to happen to him. He had told them he was going to die. Most of them didn't believe it. They believed that something would happen and, and you know, he would you'd do some miracle to, to, uh, to get out of it. But um, she got it. Jesus let her know that until he comes back, the poor people will be here. She let, he let all of them know that there will always be poor people to minister to. But she did something special. Mary and the others would not have many more opportunities to express their devotion to Jesus in person. And she was doing the right thing. So believers should affirm others who worship Jesus. Let me say that again. Believers should affirm others who worship Jesus. You know, today many are criticizing the recent Asbury Revival services and other repent, uh, services of repentance and worship across uh, our college campuses. And 
it seems to be spreading. It seems to be affecting an age of people that the church has had difficulty in reaching. So let's pray for them and with them rather than criticizing them. Real repentance produces change and fruit. And let's pray for change and fruit to be produced by the Holy Spirit in us and through us for all uh, for his glory. I think we just need to support them in doing what is right. And that, I think that goes along with what Jesus was teaching about what Mary did. Don't criticize her. She was right. There's a new movie out called The Jesus Revolution, which I've not seen yet. But it happened about the time I was saved. Interesting enough, uh, a lot of the revolution that came in the late 60s and early 70s uh, was through the college students. And maybe that would happen again. Praise God if it, if, it, if it does. But the interesting thing in my life is it was a group of college students who came to my little church at the First Baptist Church of Ullin, Illinois, a little church of about 100 and they came from our local university, Southern Illinois University, and they came, preached a revival, and I, at 13 years old, was saved. And I find it interesting, 53 years later, I'm still serving the Lord and telling people about Jesus on a media source that had not even been invented yet. Who knows what God's going to do with a movement of God? And maybe we won't know for years all that God's doing with these, this revival happening on the college campuses. The third point is, Division causes the plot to kill Jesus uh, to thicken. John 12, verses 9 through 11. Then a large crowd of the Jews learned that he was there. They came not only because of Jesus, but also to see Lazarus, the one he had raised from the dead. But the chief priest had decided to kill Lazarus also, because he was the reason many of the Jews were deserting them and believing in Jesus. So we find a large crowd of Jews gathering, and uh, I, I put down a question here. Why did the crowd come? Well, they come because they heard Jesus was there, but they wanted to see Lazarus as well, the one who was raised from the dead. So in, in, in one meeting, they could see the one who raised him and the one who was raised, and they were excited about that. So they came for positive reasons, but... Uh, the other question is, what was being talked about by the chief priests and the religious leaders? Well, I talked a little bit about this last week, but uh, they were talking about killing Lazarus and Jesus. The reason they wanted to kill Lazarus was because many of the Jews were deserting them, their teachings, and believing in Jesus. It wasn't good for their business. We have to assume that the faith identified it at the end of verse 11 is a genuine saving faith. The expression going over to Jesus assumes a conscious decision to leave the views and behavior of the chief priests and identify themselves with the Lord. So the third application is believers honor Christ by testifying to others about his work. So as we look at this event, uh, we see some representative people who are good examples. Let's go back to Martha. Martha represents work, okay? Uh, she served the dinner she had, that she had prepared for the Lord. This was just as much a fragrant offering as Mary's ointment. So what Martha was doing was right, okay? Uh, and so uh, we, uh, we can see that in Hebrews 13, 16. Mary's act represented worship. She was worshiping the Lord taking the opportunity to worship. And it was good, another good example. And then there was Lazarus. His represents witness. People went to Bethany just to be able to see him who had been raised from the dead, and he could share with them, Jesus is the one who did this. He is the, <laughs> he is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the resurrection. Those are characteristics, these three of true discipleship. So we can honor Christ. And here's our personal challenge for this lesson. We can honor Christ by testifying to others about Jesus through our work, through our worship, and through our witness. And these are some of the ways that we can show our devotion and appreciation to Jesus. So let me ask you, I want you to, I want to go back to that perfume that permeated the house. What does your life and relationship smell like? You may seem, ah, that sounds like a strange question, Bob. I don't get what you mean. Well, what is a sweet aroma to the Lord? Well, it's a metaphor for doing something that really, really pleases him. 
I remember uh, one time my wife uh, told me one of the reasons she liked dating me was because I always smelled nice. It wasn't because I was handsome. It wasn't because I was a smooth talker. It wasn't because I was the man of her dreams. She said, I smelled nice. Well, maybe God is trying to tell us something like that. Listen to Ezekiel 20, verse 41. When I bring you from the peoples and gather you from the countries where you have been scattered, I will accept you as a pleasing aroma, and I will demonstrate my holiness through you in the sight of the nations. I look back and wonder if it was the Johnson's baby shampoo that I used on my hair or the old spice that I slapped on my face and neck. But really all I cared about was pleasing my girlfriend at the time who has now been my wife for nearly five decades. We're, at, we're in number 47 right now. My goal as a Christian is to please the Lord. And if he wants a sweet smelling aroma, then I want to live with that in mind. Ephesians 5, 2 in the New Living Translation says this, Live a life filled with love, following the example of Christ. He loved us and offered himself as a sacrifice for us. Get this, a pleasing aroma to God. So Jesus' sacrifice of dying on the cross for our sins so that we could be saved was a pleasing aroma. So sacrificing our lives by living for Jesus in this culture and in this age would be a pleasing aroma to him. And that's what we should strive for. Remember, Jesus is worthy of our worship as the promised Messiah, the Son of God. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for teaching us about things that you like so that we can incorporate these characteristics into our life in such a way that we will be a pleasing aroma to you. Lord, please help me to do that because my heart's desire is to please you. And I do believe that there are some out there that's watching these Bible studies that uh, have the same goal, is to be pleasing to you because you are worthy of our worship. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.